Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and tap the like button. I will be tying an alder fly from family Celidae, order Megaloptera. The hook is an Arex FW531 size 8. Create a thread base just behind the eye of the hook. Take a section of ginger Swiss straw, fold it in half like you're rolling a cigarette. Secure it in place just behind the eye. Alderfly larvae resemble the larvae of fish flies and helgramites, but are generally smaller. Unlike helgramites, alderflies and fish flies do not have gill tufts on the underside of their abdomen. Alderfly larvae have seven pairs of pointed appendages along the abdomen known as filamentous gills. Take a section of 15 pound maxima and flatten it in the center. Secure your section of mono in place behind the eye, leaving a little bit of space. Advance your thread to the rear of the hook, going around the bend. Using a 1 32nd inch strip of lead free foil, cover the majority of the shank. Now add a second bobbin. I'm using 30 denier nano silk from Semperfly. To create the single straight tail filament, I'm using a barb from an emu feather in natural. Secure it in place at the bend. Now take another bobbin with tan 140 denier thread. Build it into a carrot shape. Be sure to fill all the cracks and crevices along the shank. Now wet finish and remove the bobbin with the 140 denier flat thread. I used UTC 140 in tan. Like many insects with aquatic larvae, alderflies spend the majority of their lives in water. After mating, females lay their eggs on leaves or branches overhanging the water. Once hatched, the larvae quickly move into the water where they feed, grow, and molt through several stages. For the abdomen, I use slim skin from hairline. Cut it into a 1 32nd inch strip and cut an angle point at the end. Secure it in place just behind where you ended with your lead at the rear. Again, be sure to clean all the cracks and crevices. Spiral wrap the slim skin eight to nine times, ending up just shy of the center of the hook. Secure it in place. Cut the excess. Wet finish and remove the second bobbin. Spiral wrap the third bobbin forward three turns using the back edge of each segment. Now mark the abdominal segments to your liking. I'm using a brown Copic marker and a color blender. For the seven sets of filamentous appendages, I'm using a soft emi feather and cutting off the barbs. Filamentous gills on larvae are primarily used for respiration, specifically for extracting oxygen from water. These gills are highly branched structures that increase surface area, facilitating efficient gas exchange. In some cases, they also play a role in water and ion regulation. Fish fly and halgramite larvae have eight pair of fleshy pointed abdominal appendages. And instead of a single tail filament, like the alder fly, they have a pair of hooked leg-like appendages at the rear. The alder fly larvae have seven filamentous appendages along the abdomen.
Different alderfly species prefer various types of aquatic environments. Some larvae thrive in slow-moving, detritus-filled waters such as lakes and ponds, while others are commonly found in silt-bottom pools in calm sections of rivers and streams. Certain species are even able to tolerate polluted water. The adult stage of the alderfly is short-lived, and they are typically seen among vegetation near water sources. Alderflies belong to one of two families within the order Megaloptera. Megaloptera means large winged. The other family includes fish flies and dobson flies. Megalopterans, which were once grouped within a large order called Neuroptera or net winged insects, are now recognized as a separate, smaller order containing lace wings, mantid flies, ant lions, and owl flies. For the wing pads, we're going to take the same slim skin we use for the abdomen and cut it to a point, secure it in place. At this point, using squirrel dubbing and ginger will create a tight, fine dubbing noodle and advance it to the post. This process helps create a perfect base for when we create our legs. Crisscross around the post. And advance your thread back to the rear. To create the three pair of jointed legs near the front of the body, I'm using tan or ginger goose biots in three sets. Here we're creating the hind legs. Take a dollop of super glue at each junction for durability. Now create another tight dubbing noodle and fill in the space behind and in front of the legs. Cut the waist and fold over the slim, slim skin to create the first wing pad. As you can see by the image, they have three distinct pads and a head. To create the longer center legs, we will follow the same process as we did on the hind legs.
As you can see, you can steer the legs with your dubbing noodle to get them in the configuration that you like them. And create the second wing pad by folding it over and secure it in place. Now follow the same process as we did on the hind and the center legs to create the shorter four legs. Fold over the forward wing pad and secure in place. Cut away the waist slim skin. To build up the larger head, we'll create another tight dubbing noodle and crisscross and figure eight around our post. For the antennae, I'm using light done micro fibbits. Secure one on either side of the hook. Create another dubbing noodle and dub between the post and the Swiss straw. Cut the waist of the micro fibbits. Fold back the Swiss draw to the junction with the front wing pad. Mark the threader with a marker. Hit it with a bead of super glue and whip finish. Cut away the bobbin. Cut away the excess waste of the Swiss straw. Cut the monofilament post in line with the Swiss draw on the edge. Mark it to your liking. I'm using a tan marker. Now to create the eyes, mark the posts with a black marker.
using Solaris Ultrafine Flex. I'm going to coat the head and the three thoracic segments. and cure it. And I'm going to coat the abdomen and cure it. Using a pair of tweezers and a lighter, I'm going to create the jointed legs. Creating the femur, the tibia, and the tarsus. For the junction between the femur and the tibia, I'm going to fold the fibers forward toward the eye. And to create the tibia to tarsus, I'm going to fold it back. And this isn't a necessary step, but to create the three-dimensional lines and more realism, I'm going to mark the edges and the top of the thoracic segments with a brown marker. And again, thank you for watching.